Uh, hi again, my name is Mike and I'm doing engineering for Fluence Labs. And today I'm going to tell you about uh, Fluence Compute Engine. I will pronounce it like uh, FC. So FC is an engine intended to run a multimodal WebAssembly application with help of interface types. So in particular, uh, in particular the agenda of uh, uh, my talk is follows. <clears throat> so first of all, I will talk a little bit about the Fluence Review about uh, how, why, and uh, um, with what role we are doing uh, Fluence. Then I will talk a little bit about WebAssembly and interface type proposal. I believe that many of you know a lot about WebAssembly, so I will talk uh, a little bit and just highlight some important details for the part of talk. Uh, then uh, we will talk about Fluence SDK, about uh, two-stage uh, compilation scheme. Uh, finally, uh, I will uh, show uh, the architecture of FC and uh, uh, at the end uh, we will talk about why, in my opinion and the opinion of uh, uh, the Fluence team, Rust is one of the most suitable languages for any projects related to WebAssembly. So let's move on and start with the Fluence overview. So Fluence is a decentralized function as a service that intended to run a WebAssembly model with several important uh, features. So the first feature is that uh, it cost uh, zero, yes, DevOps operations. Uh, so it means that uh, all DevOps uh, is done by the Fluence node and the Fluence uh, network. Then we have uh, easy integration with other models. Uh, and finally, Fluence provides a special language called Aquamarine that intended to uh, run complex multi-agent requests across the uh, Fluence network. So and in the future, we hope that Fluence will allow developers to get paid automatically for separate models or entire applications on WebAssembly by the royalty model. So the royalty model here means that uh, the developers can, uh, uh, can get paid by the fact that uh, their models or applications are used by anyone else uh, in the Fluence network. So, mm -hmm. so on this slide, on this slide, you can see uh, Fluence functions service overview. Uh, here we have several terms uh, in Fluence. Uh, first term is a model. Yes, uh, I, I already use it. So model is just a WebAssembly model uh, that has imports and export in a special format. So I will describe later what is the format and why it's important for us. Uh, and a bunch of models uh, can construct a service. So the sense TV, uh, we call it service, but actually it could be considered like a program. Uh, and in its turn, a bunch of services uh, can construct uh, an entity called backend. Uh, so each service can, uh, can be located on, on, on separated peer in the network. For example, service one can be on one peer and service two, service three can be on different peer, uh, so it's, it doesn't matter. So backend is a distributed uh, set of services. And the last one term that we, we are using in Fluence is the functions. So functions is a bunch of uh, code that written on Aquamarine. And functions is a backend uh, API. Yes, it's uh, like a, a functions uh, operate uh, with services. Uh, maybe the Another scheme of how we can consider this um, this Fluence uh, function service is like, a, uh, for example, complex backends that consist of microservices uh, in some, for example, some huge organizations. Uh, and uh, backend exposes this API to users that can use it uh, like in a usual function as a service. Uh, here you can see the example of script uh, on our special language. Uh, actually, I won't talk much about Aquamarine, uh, and uh, if you have, uh, if you want to, if you want more details, uh, in the end of the talk, I will share some information about our launch event, and uh, on this launch event, we will talk uh, a little bit about Aquamarine uh, and how is it uh, proceed in our network. So actually, it's uh, based on Picalculus. Uh, here you can see parallel operations uh, and so on. So uh, let's move on. Uh, to WebAssembly and interface types. 
I uh, loved uh, the, the slide. The slide is taken from Ben Smith presentation, so you can obtain from this link. This presentation from uh, CPPCon previous year. And uh, here is a, is a, is a graph, is a directed graph. Uh, and uh, moving from left to right, uh, a lot of uh, different uh, definitions of WebAssembly can be constructed. So I ended uh, with this one. So in here, <clears throat> I think you, um, many of you know about WebAssembly. Uh, maybe the most important uh, thing here is just WebAssembly uh, in MVP has only primitive types. So primitive types, uh, so there, there are four or five, depending on the version, is just the integral of floating point types. <laughs> yes, it's, uh, uh, so the main takeaways uh, here is that there are no any complex types like strings, uh, arrays, uh, enums, uh, so also on. So there are just five or four types, uh, integer and floating point. Uh, WebAssembly <coughs> module could be considered like a black box. Um, that have uh, that have imports and export. So black box uh, here means that it can't uh, interact with operation system or maybe some browser or um, what whatever uh, only with imports. So, for example, to uh, uh, to access a file system or maybe to uh, print a log to system console. Uh, WebAssembly module should use imports that it uh, have to uh, head uh, in its uh, import section. And the same story with exports. Uh, WebAssembly module can't operate by, yes, by, by itself. It, uh, uh, it can operate only by request and response model. Yes, uh, when we call export and special functions that uh, um, trigger some internal work, so only only that way WebAssembly module is, is work. Uh, WASI is another gem uh, from the WebAssembly world. So WASI stands for WebAssembly System Interface. It is a standard of imports for WebAssembly application. So it defines about uh, 50 or six like imports. So it's uh, it's written in, in this form. Uh, I think from the uh, who familiar with POSIX like uh, functions, um, I think it's uh, easy to get that. Uh, what does this function uh, does? Uh, more details can be found in the documents. So the main feature of this uh, import is just to provide a standard way to operate with external world, yes, with uh, operation system or, or browser, for example. Uh, let's consider a simple example that just uh, print hello world uh, to the system console. And uh, if you compile uh, this with uh, wasm 32 WASI target, uh, and then if you, for example, uh, disassemble it uh, and uh, view import section, there will be about five imports. So in this import uh, uh, provides capability to, uh, to write, uh, yes, to the system console, to, to the file. So, and WASI uh, is good in, in, this, uh, in this context because it provides the standard how import from different languages. For example, if you, uh, if you write uh, the similar code on C++ with the printf for uh, OC out, yes, uh, the import should be the same. So on this slide, you can see different WebAssembly runtimes. <clears throat> Actually, they can be divided on two types, browser and the server side. So browser is the most important one and uh, maybe the most uh, advanced is uh, uh, runtimes from Chrome and from Firefox. They are different. So uh, there are several uh, server types runtimes. So the first one is a WAVM. So it is a reference implementation. It's written on C++. Um, so the next one is the Wasmer. Wasmer uh, support, supports three compiler backends uh, written in Wast, and maybe the main feature of Wasmer uh, comparing to other server-side um, runtimes from this list that Wasmer supports a lot of integration with a lot of languages. For example, it supports integration with Java, with Go, PHP, and so on. C++, of course, Rust, uh, of course, uh, and uh, many of them. 
The next one is wasm time. So uh, I think that the main feature of wasm time uh, comparing to other, that wasm time uh, supports a lot of WebAssembly features. For example, uh, multi-values was implemented at first in wasm time and only about two months ago uh, in WASM. So the last one, I think it is one of the most interesting project, but it uh, isn't uh, developing now. Uh, so assembly. Assembly uh, compiles WebAssembly to GVM bytecode. So it's uh, translate directly WebAssembly module to GVM class. So it's written on Kotlin and it really works. Uh, we use it uh, as a previous runtime. Uh, currently we are using Wasm. So let's move on to interface types. Here you can see uh, a picture from the from official explainer. Uh, it is a complex one, but uh, I think that here is the most important thing that uh, that in the uh, middle, in the center of this box, yes, there is a WebAssembly model. Uh, WebAssembly mo uh, module uh, has imports and exports. These exports and imports. Uh, can operate only basic types, yes, only uh, these uh, four or five types. And uh, then it adapted by another model, module. This module uh, has uh, so-called adapters and uh, for each uh, imports and for each exports can be corresponding uh, adapter mo module, uh, adapter function. And this uh, function, the main, uh, the main goal of this function is just to uh, lifting and uh, lowering uh, types. So lifting means that um, types lift from basic types from integer floating point to complex type to string, uh, uh, arrays, and so on. And lowering is a uh, uh, opposite operation. Uh, the complex co complex types are lowering to uh, to row type and pass to WebAssembly. So just a story about wrapping uh, functions. Uh, row functions with some more high level functions with some high level types. So the second takeaways from the slide uh, that uh, WebAssembly has binary format and uh, it's divided into sections. Yes, and uh, there is a special type of section called custom section. Uh, and custom section is a section for user uh, or developer defined data. Uh, and uh, at now, all interface types formats that are supported uh, uh, placed in this custom section. <clears throat> so, at now, uh, interface types is on in the feature proposal state. So, feature proposal is a level one of uh, fifth level from zero to four. So, we're just on the on the early stage. <clears throat> and uh, unfortunately, development now is mostly in private. Uh, and for example, if you uh, if you uh, see this as official repos uh, repository, you could see that uh, there were no video calls uh, for a long time, but some result uh, can be obtained from LinkedIn Cubase uh, branch. And uh, about two days ago, there was a pull request, big pull request from this branch. So and I hope that uh, in the future, interface types will be uh, developing more, maybe more fast, I believe. So, and as far as we know, uh, interface types aren't used uh, for server-side applications. I know only uh, that Wasm Engine has bindings for uh, interface types. It can generate them, but uh, as far as I know, uh, generate it can could be generated only for Wasm time. And uh, on the current stage, interface types uh, only uh, partially useful and uh, can be used out of the box. And uh, then I will show why. Um, so there are two popular, uh, maybe the most popular uh, WebAssembly runtimes, uh, Wasmir and Wasm time. And uh, both of them uh, aren't support uh, interface types out of the box. So yes, Wasmir has uh, separate virtual machine agnostic rate. So the link is here. Uh, but this grade can't be used directly. So you need to do a lot of work to integrate it to Wasmir or Wasm time. For example, uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we are forced to it 
uh, and used in our uh, FC. And you, if you compare with the original one, you can see a lot of changes. So what about Wasm time? <clears throat> Wasm time has uh, support of interface types. Uh, maybe as, as far as I know, it was the first runtime that uh, su supported interface types, but now it was dropped uh, on March this year. Uh, and you can see discussion about them uh, on this issue. So let's move on to the our Rust uh, SDK. Uh, but first of all, when we started to uh, to design our SDK, so we wanted to make it the most easy to use as possible. Yes, and uh, we also thought that it was good uh, to be similar to something uh, familiar. Yes, and the only maybe the only thing is familiar is uh, only Wasm engine. Yes, because uh, uh, maybe Wasm engine is the most uh, important and maybe the most popular product that provides bind uh, bindings for uh, JavaScript and uh, and that. So actually, we uh, we try to use Wasm engine and try to adapt for our FCA, but uh, uh, we failed because Wasm engine contains a lot of code uh, about maybe. 80% code that uh, highly dependent on JavaScript and JavaScript uh, um, features. So it was uh, it was easy to develop our own SDK. So on, and the last requirement is to easy way to port existing projects. Uh, so from the previous part, you can see that there are a lot of limitation in interface types. Yes, uh, Wasmer and Wasm time aren't supported out of the box. Uh, there are some other limitations that I uh, haven't, uh, that I didn't say yes previously, and we will talk it about uh, about it later. But with interface types, uh, it allow you to uh, abstract from Wasm compilation constraints with uh, from these four four types or five types. And write on uh, on a real Rust, yes, on a on a usual Rust. And here we can see Hello World uh, for Fluence. Uh, so uh, we expose the uh, all power of procedural macros. Yes, and uh, so here we can see that the, we have one functions uh, called greeting. And uh, if we apply uh, our FC macro to it. Uh, it will export. It will export with interface type. So it will has corresponding adapter, greeting adapter. Uh, I will show how it look like later. Uh, so and just this. So it, uh, here in the function we can use names that has type string. We shouldn't uh, operate with row wasm types. We can use uh, normal Rust types. Yes, we can use uh, types that supported on our SDK. So I think that the main feature of uh, Fluence Compute Engine is support of multimodal scheme. Actually, there are two, be, uh, two basic linking schemes uh, in WebAssembly world. The first one is uh, shared everything. So shared everything means that model linking together and shared every piece of information. For example, memory, uh, linear memory, stack, table, and so on. And uh, uh, the opposite scheme called shared nothing and sharing nothing is a scheme where models are um, linked only with import and export so here you can see several models on the scheme and they are uh, linked together with uh, only with corresponding imports and exports and the model is just a uh, it, it could be seen it could be considered like a plugin yes and a pl plugin model system so it's like a black box it has its own uh, encapsulated its own memory table and some uh, other control structures uh, intended for WebAssembly. And the only way how it could interact uh, and uh, allow to interact with it only with imports and exports. So here you can see how it uh, look like from the uh, Rust side. So we have three modules: side storage, curl, and local storage. So just a mod, just an example. So curl uh, using curl utility uh, from the 
uh, from the console, from the COI. I will show you then how exactly. And local storage is only also just an example. It's uh, the main purpose of it is just to store a file by providing name uh, in the file system. So and site storage is a uh, so is a model that just uh, using curl to extract some site, yes, and then uh, store it on, on the file system. So, and here you can see how uh, it's linked to, on, on the Rust side. So here we just has a foreign, uh, foreign mod, foreign mod section. And uh, the only thing that we need to do is just applying uh, FCE macro here and just to uh, provide the uh, the full name of the of the model blinking model so it's work exactly was uh, as a as a ffi and rust yes just a similar scheme but here we use uh, we uh, we use complex type yes we uh, use string we can use structs and so on so about structures uh, we also support structures <laughs> and uh, uh, as, <coughs> as you already know, uh, the only things we need to do is just also applying FC macro on, on the on the on the top of the structure, and then the structure can be used as a argument or as an output type in uh, in functions. So here, yes, here is the link on the full example, uh, and uh, uh, size storage also could be obtained by this link. <clears throat> so, uh, how it works internally, how uh, it could be com compiled. Uh, as I already said, interface type requires using of custom section, yes. It needs a way to store all information about itself, about adapters, about uh, some bindings and so on, uh, somewhere in the binary. And the only uh, things uh, where men ca can uh, save uh, some additional data, some user-defined data in WebAssembly is a custom section. So uh, compiling, uh, compiling such code, for example, required to, um, to obtain binary with a custom section, was binary with a custom section. Um, there, are, there is no possibility to make it simple, yes, to make it uh, with some macro or something like that. Uh, the another issue is that, is that procedural macros in Rust aren't stateful. Yes, and uh, the order of uh, of ex uh, extending or expanding, sorry, expanding uh, uh, isn't defined. Yes, it could be applying in a uh, not determined way. Uh, so because of that, uh, we are using two stage scheme uh, like in Wasm engine. So on the first stage, we are expanding macro, uh, and this macro generates uh, extra information that then will, will uh, be used on the second stage. And the second stage is uh, so generating interface types. So it looks like this. <clears throat> For example, we have our Hello World application. Then on the first stage, it's expanding to several functions. That one of them is a wrapping uh, function that uh, lifting uh, uh, lifting to complex type, then called original one, a greeting function, and then uh, worrying back <clears throat> to row types. And also a bunch of uh, additional information is generated. Uh, there could be a lot of custom sections uh, in WebAssembly binary. So, and uh, uh, for each function, for each item, uh, that uh, with FC macro uh, additional section is generated. So the section contains uh, JSON, uh, some, some data in JSON. Uh, the, data, the data includes signature function and some additional information that is that will be used uh, by our uh, CLI uh, utility special, it's called FC also. So, and on the second stage, <coughs> all this information will be parsed and removed from the from the binary and from the uh, objective files. Yes, and uh, uh, interface types will be generated and embedded in, into WASM binary. So the only things that you need, uh, need to do is just 
uh, type uh, FC build yes and and that all <clears throat> so at, at the, uh, on the current uh, moment uh, Fluence uh, uh, SDK supports uh, a lot of types so all integral types floating point types strings vectors structures uh, and uh, any combination of them for example you can see that uh, such scheme is possible yes uh, so it's uh, several uh, arrays with uh, records that also uh, contains uh, inner arrays and so on uh, but uh, we have several limitations so the first limitation is that we uh, aren't support uh, some box types enums so uh, we, we support only structs vectors yes and strings in, yeah, from complex types and any combination of them and at the moment we uh, uh, we are supporting uh, passing only by value uh, and uh, we are working on passing by reference mm -hmm. uh, by reference uh, arguments uh, to function so let's move on to the architecture of fluent compute engine so fluent compute engine uh, consists of several layers so here you can see three layers uh, uh, this is done because to feed different purposes. So the first purpose is to running application services. So application service is a service that uh, from the third or a third slide uh, that uh, consists of several WebAssembly module, modules. Yes, and uh, here it's called app service. And the second uh, goal is running Acromarine. So Acromarine has a separate runner. It's called Acromarine VM. Uh, but we believe that uh, the scheme can be used in another scenarios. For example, uh, for example, you can use it for any plugin system. Uh, for example, in games or maybe something, or maybe uh, maybe in complex software uh, where module uh, should encapsulate its states. Yes. Uh, so let's consider each uh, layer more uh, more precisely. So on the first, on on the bottom, yes, we have engine. It has the, this API. So here you can see uh, very common functions that can. So this engine can load module, yes, by name, and with providing uh, provided uh, configuration, and uh, also it can remove module by name. Then uh, by using engine, we can obtain uh, why the state of the module or module uh, by module name. And also we can uh, obtain interface. So here interface means that it's all uh, export types, sorry, export functions with uh, records uh, that has uh, such mod module. So uh, there is also another function that uh, receive a mod module name uh, as this. So, but here it uh, uh, it will be too long if I include it also. So, and uh, the last one is a call function. Yes, it, it can call uh, it can call a module uh, addressed by supplied module name uh, function name in this model and with supplied argument argument. Sorry. Uh, so, argument here is a is a complex argument. So, I here yes means uh, so i stands for interface so it's interface value it's a string records and so on uh, this was on previous slides so on here it uh, result it has also a set of uh, i values so for that uh, also can be empty on second layer we have function the service <clears throat> uh, the main goal of this is to uh, work with configs parses json arguments to i values so I will show you later how it helps. Uh, defines host imports. Uh, I will also show later. And uh, actually, it has a lot of uh, it has a lot of uh, constructors that can construct function the service in different ways. Uh, with with configs, with set of files, and so on. So on the third layer, we have uh, application service. So the main purpose of application service is preparing a service, application services. Uh, it means that we need to set 
uh, WASI environment variables and prepares directory structure. And uh, here, Aquamarine, uh, Aquamarine uh, runner is, mm, is done the same thing with the WASI environment variable. It also sets special host functions called uh, call service, and it's just a plugin, yes, plugin and fluence node. Uh, each service has uh, configuration. This configuration, <coughs> uh, for example, uh, here is a configuration of site storage uh, service that consists of three modules. Yes, yeah, the first one is local storage, curl, and site storage. So, and uh, uh, here you can see that we can uh, configure, for example, WASI state. Yes, we can set uh, which directories will be seen by this module. Yes, and only this can be. Uh, can so a model you uh, can operate only with pre-opened files yes and uh, only on the side it's so it works like a sandbox also the another capability here is amount of binaries so maybe you remember the function curl that uh, I said that it's called uh, CLI uh, curl binary from the operation system and uh, here the main purpose of that is to mount uh, mount here means that all strings that we pass to function with name curl will be passed directly to the uh, to the CLI from the operation system that is uh, uh, <clears throat> that is set here. Uh, so the main uh, so the main purpose here is that uh, we want to provide easy way to port existing software to the fluence. So, and we know that uh, not every program can be compiled to WebAssembly. For example, uh, some complex databases, yes, uh, there is no, uh, no way to compile it to WebAssembly in effective uh, way, yes. Uh, but to use it in, uh, in the Fluence ecosystem, we provide uh, such scheme. Uh, in future, we will use a Unix socket for that, uh, when it will be enabled in WASI. So also here, uh, there could be another option that is set as maximum memory uh, that can be used by this model, module, yes, in WASM pages. So uh, let's dig a little bit into the details. Uh, so let's discuss how multimodal call works. So let's take a look again to our three modules, uh, site storage, curl, and local storage. So, and site storage has three imports, uh, one from curl model and two from local storage module. For each of this import and each export, uh, there will be corresponding adapter, yes, from interface type. This adapter has interpreter. So I will uh, show you later what is an interpreter and the instruction for it. So, and the uh, adapters uh, linked together, yes, corresponding import adapter linked to corresponding export adapter. So let's, uh, let's uh, see how, uh, for example, file put is work. Oh, sorry, not file put, how curl, uh, curl function is work and how, uh, what is the overhead and what is the details, how uh, execution flow is, uh, uh, so what, what is the execution flow of this call? So yes, we have site storage, curl, uh, corresponding uh, import adapter and corresponding export adapter. So here you can see uh, instructions. Yes, these instructions are defined by interface type proposal. On the current stage, it has several, about 60 instructions as far as I know. Uh, I can be wrong, but it's about them. Uh, so the main purpose of this instruction is just to operate with types. So we we can't, for example, write a program with this instruction. Yes, the only purpose is to convert types to uh, lifting and uh, lowering types between uh, uh, row and uh, uh, interface types. Yes. Uh, so let's uh, view uh, on this this box. <clears throat> Here you can see four instructions. So first two uh, 
ah, yes, uh, here I also need to say that uh, about interpreter. So interpreter here is a entire virtual machine, stack-based virtual machine, uh, but very, very simple. It's defined uh, in Wasmir interface type crates. So just a, a simple stack-based virtual machine. And all of these uh, instructions are also intended to be run by stack-based virtual machines, like, like WebAssembly. Uh, like in WebAssembly. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, what uh, what was the purpose of that of this? So, this is this one is a, is an adapter for import curl function from curl uh, from side storage model. Yes. Uh, so, here the thing that we need uh, that we uh, do is we put uh, on to stack. Yes, to operation stack to values. Uh, so here, these values are pointer to the string and string size. Uh, then uh, string lift memory is called. So the purpose of the lift memory is to uh, get two values from a stack and construct a string and push back to the stack. Yes, uh, so it can, uh, so it lift, yes, it's, it get pointer and string uh, and size of the string and uh, construct a UTF based string and put it uh, put it on the stack. And then uh, last one call core nine is called. This call core uh, call uh, this one this expert adapter. Uh, it looks like this. <clears throat> so the control flow passed from this one to this. This is. Uh, Different interpreter. Yes, it is, it's a different instance of uh, Wasmer interpreter. Uh, so here there are some uh, work to pass values from stack of this uh, interpreter to this interpreter. Uh, sorry, here not to stack, but to some uh, uh, something that was called arguments. So yes, here we have instruction that can get uh, values from argument by index. So, and there are some uh, structure called arguments. So there are some work that we passed here as only string uh, from here to here. So what, what we need to do here, uh, this. <clears throat> this we need to uh, learn, yes, to learn string to types that is, uh, that can be, uh, that WebAssembly can operate. Actually, it's uh, it's I32 and I32 because string we need to uh, orient back to pointer and uh, size. So how how it, it's done? Yes. So first of all, uh, first of all, we uh, put string on the stack. We compute its size. Yes. So this this instruction is just uh, put string from stack, compute its size, and uh, put size back to the stack. Uh, so then we call allocate. So allocate is the export uh, function from curl mod module. Yes, it's uh, actually we have ABI. So there are two functions in, 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 the, in it, uh, allocate and deallocate. So on here we call allocate uh, and allocate return back pointer. So just, just a malloc or just a uh, alloc in Rust. So here on the stack, you have pointer uh, to memory that is uh, size of, of the string, yes, string size. Then we getting uh, string again and uh, call Lorin memory, Lorin string. <clears throat> so the purpose of that, uh, this instruction, uh, the, the semantics of this instruction, sorry, uh, it takes two elements from stack, pointer and string, and lowering memory to WebAssembly module, yes? So just uh, put string to WebAssembly module. So it's done by this interpreter. And then called the real function. Uh, this call core seven is called uh, this real function, real WebAssembly functions from uh, curl model, module. <clears throat> On the second stage, uh, so we need to lift memory, yes? We need to uh, get uh, string back uh, from curl uh, model and pass it 
here, yes, process to import uh, Zapier. But here we have problem. <clears throat> the problem here, uh, here in this. So actually this set of instructions here should done the work the similar for this one, yes? It should uh, obtain string, computed size, co-locate, uh, or in memory, and, uh, and, and, and all this. But uh, in current interface type proposal, uh, there are no instructions for duplicating and swapping values on the stack. So, and uh, we had to add them, yes, uh, duplicated swap instructions uh, to interpreter uh, to make the scheme work. Because here we have two strings, yes, we need to duplicate it on the stack. Uh, so it is so that why uh, the current proposal can be used directly for example, at least for uh, for um, passing values from uh, between modul modules. Uh, so, if you want to use, we have forked uh, interface types and uh, this instructions added. Yes, and it can be used in such a way. And um, the final uh, final thing that I want to highlight here is that we that all of this one, yes, it looks maybe a little bit complex, but all of these instructions, all of these adapters uh, and so on, are generated by our CLI instructions. And the only thing that you need to do is just uh, type uh, FCA build, yes, uh, from uh, your console, and uh, uh, all of this will be generated automatically. So the next topic is the host functions. So host functions is a function that exposed from host. So host here is a like a uh, like in for example in virtual uh, machine world uh, terms so like we have host and guest. Uh, for example, host could be operation system or browser, and guest is a WebAssembly model. So and um, uh, it's important to uh, have easy way to export host functions. So to WebAssembly module, yes. Uh, <clears throat> to achieve this goal, we have uh, we have also redesigned some WASMR internals, and uh, uh, we have uh, we have configuration for each model, and this configuration includes a hash map of host import descriptor from string, uh, so its name of function to to this descriptor. So the descriptor contains uh, so this closure, yes, closure of such type. Here you can see that uh, this closure uh, receive context. Context is a special uh, special WASMR internals, and uh, with this context, uh, for example, memory could be obtained, table, and some internals of uh, WebAssembly module. And also, it receives uh, array of I values. So I values here means that complex values, as strings, uh, records, and so on. And uh, it returned back option of I value. Uh, so, but maybe the mm, the complex moment here is just we need to set uh, separate fields, argument type and output type. It's ne uh, it's need for beginnings, yes, and because we uh, because here we uh, we receive uh, some array of I values, that, uh, yes, and we can't get types here. Yes, because if you don't have type, we, if you have only, we know that we, we receive only array. Uh, and the last one is a error handler. So there could be some errors uh, in lifting process, yes, while lifting from uh, wasm to uh, complex types. And uh, this error handler, handler could be none, yes, and uh, in this way, panic will occur. So this uh, last chance to make everything uh, in anything with uh, with the error. <clears throat> so the next thing that I want to show is the Fluence REPL. So REPL is a, a CLI utility that uh, intended to test uh, Fluence services. So. Uh, it, it could be loaded, it could load config 
Yes, because uh, as I showed, that uh, contains information for models and has several features. So it could load, unload, call, uh, could create new application service, has several uh, ways to obtain information about uh, loaded modules, like environment variables, uh, file system states. For example, it could show you all file state descriptors or i nodes in uh in wise file system that uh, model module is uh, used yes and uh, of course it can call call by module name and function name with supplied arguments so for example uh let's consider the simple uh simple example of ipfs connector we have uh, in in FC uh, repository, we have uh, uh, the folder example, and uh, there is IPFS, uh, IPFS node, yes, IPFS node example, that consists of two modules. The first one is the IPFS pure, uh, and the second IPFS effector. So, and this one is linked with mounted binary IPFS and expose these three functions. So, and IPFS pure is a module that intended to uh, interact with users. So, it, in, it, it exposed two main functions, put and get. So, put function uh, receive array of bytes. So, here you can see that it's array of uh, bytes. Yes. Here it could be different types. Uh, so, we just put a byte array to IPFS and then get. Uh, and then the, it returns string. This string is a hash of uh, uh, that, that was returned by IPFS. And get uh, receives this hash, yes, and can uh, download file from IPFS and return it as a binary. So, and uh, an example of usage here we put to IPFS array of one, two, and three, yes, and uh, IPFS return us uh, this hash. And then we use uh, function get with this hash and receive the three bytes. Yes, it's just just an example. So and about uh, so how fast is it? Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of work on instantiation, on uh, exporting, uh, importing, uh, and uh, uh, some additional interpreters should work. So, but uh, really, it's not so. Uh, it's not so uh, slow, yes. Here you can see example of all using Redis. So we have ported Redis and our Redis uh, compiled with all, uh, with, yes, with, with, um, with a third level of optimization and uh, with uh, ripped uh, uh, custom section and so on. It's uh, take about half megabytes, yes, on the file system. So and loading, so just the code of Redis, yes. Uh, and uh, loading uh, time of this module is about half a second. And in Redis we have, oh, sorry, in, in FCA we have uh, uh, lazy linking uh, scheme. It's uh, really partially lazy linking because we, uh, I will show you later. So, but uh, any subsequent calls are much faster than previous one. Uh, is, is, is the first one, yes, uh, sorry. Here you can see that the first call is about three milliseconds and all consequent call is about, uh, this one is a microseconds, yes, so it's 64 microseconds, setting B. Uh, so here you can, uh, so this, this invoke expose uh, this interpreter, yes, this import adapter, uh of radius and so on <clears throat> so for, for the future we have several plans uh, so first of all we want to uh, support shared everything linking scheme because uh, it now we support only sharing nothing uh, then we also want to full lazy linking scheme uh, with some with some uh, for, for example now uh, models can be loaded only uh, only if uh, previously was 
uh, loaded modules with corresponding exports. For example, if uh, module A wants uh, exports from module B, uh, module B should be loaded previously. Yes, then we want to support more argument types, uh, as I already uh, said. I want to support box types, enums. Uh, then we also make uh, Fluence Compute Engine is virtual machine agnostic because now it's it's based only on Wasmer. And uh, finally, we want to uh, uh, we are working now on the supporting multi values uh, because in turn because previously was Wasmer uh, aren't uh, isn't allowed to use multi values and we need to we need some global variables to pass uh, complex tracks between models. So in the last section uh, about uh, why we think that Rust is the one of the most suitable languages for WebAssembly. So uh, first of all, Rust provides two targets out of the box, wasm 32 unknown and wasm 32 wasi Yes, it's uh, very, very easy comparing to C++ because in C++, wasm 32 unknown is a uh, very painful yes you need, you need to download a lot of things uh, adjusting and so on so on it's it's, it's very complex uh, the second feature of course is procedural macros uh, you can see that applying macros could uh, provide easy way to generate uh, interface types to using um, using complex types so uh, unfortunately c++ aren't supported uh, such macros and uh, in C++ it's much complex to achieve such behavior than in Rust. So uh, also Rust has good ecosystems. There are a lot of crates. I uh, guess with, uh, uh, with, with a lot of uh, uh, suitable features for WebAssembly. So, and the last one is a uh, modern amenities. That means that uh, a lot of good uh, handbooks, a lot of uh, uh, tutorials, a lot of good projects, uh, and so on. So, for example, if we show on the uh, wasm 2 unknown targets, you could see that the main goal of this target is compiling modules without imports. For example, if you consider mutex, uh, if you compile, for example, mutex uh, in wasm 2 unknown targets for C++, there will be several imports. There will be imports for walk, unwalk, uh, and uh, any functions that, that we that is used from from mutexes. Uh, in Rust, uh, in a standard library, uh, there is uh, stops yes for these functions, because we know that WebAssembly supports only one thread. Now we can uh, abstract mutex by single cell variable yes and uh, work it in such a way. Also, uh, that's very good. Wasm32 unknown supports uh, uh, allocate, uh, DLMOC. Allocator is a basic one. Yes, and uh, this DLMOC uh, can, uh, so it supports only uh, beer, uh, so break style uh, system calls. Yes, and uh, it it's uh, compatible with WebAssembly because WebAssembly can only increase memory by memory grow, yes, and, the, and this work exactly like uh, SBRK uh, system call. Uh, about, so what about uh, WASI target? <clears throat> so WASI based on WASI libc uh, as a C++ version. So as I said, it transforms so imports to WASI-like imports. And uh, uh, in my opinion, it allowed to compile a lot of application now uh, in easy way to WebAssembly. For example, <coughs> if application uh, prints something or, or read files or something like that, it could be compiled to use WASI. Yes, and it will expose several standard imports from WASI uh, for six like. But of course, there are several limitations. <coughs> for example, WASI uh, isn't support now uh, circuits, yes, uh, asynchronous uh, uh, APIs, and so on. So there are, but uh, what about circuits? Now, why the folks uh, uh, are working uh, uh, very, very hard uh, on supporting circuits, and you can see, uh, and you can find a lot of information on weekly calls. So, uh, but of course, uh, uh, we have two maybe 
I think only one, uh, only one thing that we are missing in Rust ecosystem, it's stateful procedure markers. Yes, with stateful procedure markers, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can have more easy way to integrate structures. Uh, we, uh, we won't need, uh, we won't need it, uh, this complex two stage uh, schemes and so on. So you can find, so of course, uh, <laughs> we're not the first that uh, need a state for procedure markers and you can find from this, uh, in this issue discussion about that. So the several issue is a minor one because, uh, oh, it's related uh, to Karga. Uh, for example, in our case, we have a repository with, uh, uh, for example, we, with a code that should be compiled to uh, to native, yes, and uh, some projects that should be compiled to WebAssembly. And we can't uh, set different build targets uh, for different projects. And for example, we can't uh, call cargo uh, check uh, from the root of the repository. And we need to, uh, to go to each uh, folder and uh, compile it separately. So it's, it's painful, but it's, it's very minor. Uh, so, uh, thank you all for the attention. And on the last slide, uh, I want to uh, provide several links. So, uh, there are links to Flink Secure Compute Engine and the Rust SDK. Also, if, you, uh, if you're interested in, you can find me uh, in the Telegram by the sneak. Also, of, of course, you can make issues uh, here on here or on our core uh, repository called Flink. And also we are preparing for soft launch. Uh, it will be at the beginning of November or something like that. And uh, on that, uh, there will be some information about Aquamarine and uh, some internals of our network. So if you want to uh, keep in touch, uh, you, can, uh, you can follow us on Twitter or can uh, use our email news newsletters on our site. So thank you all for uh, attention. So waiting for your questions. Thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any questions? If not, I have one question. So uh, as far as I understand, uh, we don't have who uses the network, right? So, uh, sorry, like we, do, we don't have control over who are who is going to use the network. The question I'm asking is actually, so right now we are seeing loads of uh, uh, new rules about data crossing borders, that kind of stuff, uh, getting more and more important. Even the like Azure and AWS are struggling with it. Have you had any thoughts? about that in the in the network that Fluence is going to create. Mm -hmm. So actually about our network, I think uh, it's better to, so, so, so I think it's better to ask question on our launch event because currently we, um, so maybe I, I can't, uh, uh, I can't ask uh, this question for sure. Yes, because we are, uh, on the proposing stage and on the soft launch, we will uh, provide uh, all information about uh, intending, so about go of our network and uh, all related information to it. Okay. So, but, but actually our main goal is to, as I already said, is to make possible for developers to get paid for with the, royal, with the royalty model uh, for developing applications. Uh, for example, um, imagine that you uh, you know uh, some guy that uh, good developer, for example, uh, Antires that, uh, that created Redis. Yes, uh, we know that it's a very good developer. And for example, it uh, announced that, uh, oh, uh, I, want, I started a new project and uh, I want to, uh, I want to use, for example, Fluence Network or how it code, it, it doesn't matter. So I want to use uh, so this uh, network to expose uh, my new database or my, some new project. 
<clears throat> and if you believe that this guy is a good developer, you can, uh, for example, stimulate it, or you can uh, buy a piece of its product that then will be used by royalty model, and you can uh, be paid uh, as, a, as like an investor for this guy. But uh, uh, as already said, the more details of that will be shared on the soft launch. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Great talk, thanks very much. Um, in terms of sort of observability and debugging across the network, is that something that you will be part of the soft launch? Is, is that a feature that's a priority or what's your thoughts on that? Uh, so, sorry, can, can you repeat the, the last sentence, please? Yeah, so in terms of debugging, so you've, mm -hmm. you, you're, you've selected somebody's code, it's fantastic, you've deployed it, and it's running on nodes around the mm -hmm. network. What's the strategy for debugging? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's a great question. So, uh, so what, sorry, how it's, mm -hmm. uh, so we we have several uh, we have several strategies for debugging because it could be, so there could be different uh, debugging ways. Yes. First of mm -hmm. all, when, for example, you are developing a module, your own module, and can share it with other people. And uh, for example, you can in, it could integrate it to, uh, to services or to something like that. For this purpose, we have for repo, yes, we have these tools that can load uh, modules dynamically, and you can call it, you can, uh, for example, log information uh, from one module. Uh, so, uh, as far as I know, uh, it isn't possible now to easy debugging instruction by instruction with assembly code. So, there are some debuggers and different way of uh, uh, usability, but generally it isn't possible to, uh, to debug it like uh, instruction by instruction. So, and uh, maybe the most <laughs> common way is to use print, uh, printf-like debugging. Uh, so for this way, we have this REPL. Uh, here you can you can integrate your model with other modules, yes, and uh, call different functions, obtain works, and so on. So also there is another scheme for debugging. Uh, for example, if you are a node runner, yes, if you download Fluence node and want to be sure that uh, everything will be okay uh, with your node. So, because it will uh, receive for uh, some module, modules from uh, for different people, and uh, so something can be wrong here. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, for this purpose, we have uh, that's why we are using <laughs> WebAssembly. So here we have uh, we will have uh, so-called whitelist, and you can you can set that. I believe to these modules. Uh, with these hashes, yes, uh, from our DHT, and uh, you can provide a special white uh, uh, white list with this uh, with this hash, uh, hashes, and then each services that could uh, can be loaded should can should be should contain only such modules uh, from the, in this configuration, yes, that uh, allowed on your node. And also, uh, because of uh, WebAssembly goods and boxing capabilities, you can be sure that only effects that are listed in this config will be possible. For example, it will be possible only to open it files uh, that is uh, defined here in the wider sections. And also it will be possible only to uh, use such mounted binaries, yes, that is located in this section. and and that's all, yes. Uh, this is, for example, also you can, uh, yeah, you can uh, use blacklist to VASI uh, models and you can uh, deny uh, VASI uh, at all. For example, you, you can have only stateful pure mod modules. We call such models pure, that is 
don't need some operation system services or something like that. Right, okay. So what I'm hearing is if, if I wrote an application that I wanted to distribute across the, distribute across the network mm -hmm. and I wanted to take logs from all the machines that I was executing workload on, I could create, a, I'd have a whitelisted module that would allow me access to that. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, okay. Uh, cool, okay. And then uh, just more, this is more on, on the sort of P2P side than the Rust side, but in terms of discovery of nodes and management of the, of the network, is, is there a central fluence discovery node and you discover peers from that or uh, is it more of a, so, a, a broadcast, a UDP broadcast type discovery? Um... So actually we have, um, uh, our node is based on LIP2P. So maybe you know, so LIP2P. Uh, yes, I do know it, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. that answers we, the we, question. We, we, we also has modified Kademlia inside LIP2P. We have DHT and uh, this DHT using uh, our new technology that called Trust Graph. We also will highlight on our, uh, our soft launch. So, but actually Trust Graph is like a, reputation-based uh, scheme uh, for ranging nodes uh, in, your, in, in buckets. And uh, the, the request will, with high probability, uh, will, uh, um, will be to, to the node that is, uh, has higher uh, weight in the uh, buckets, according to the trust graph. And of course, like in uh, all such, uh, such things, uh, you will have some relay nodes or some user can provide relay nodes that uh, mm -hmm. can bootstrap your node. Uh, so I have a question as well. Um, but uh, about the logging part, so uh, what I like from Linux is this asterisk command, uh, which uh, prints you all the calls that an application does to the kernel. So I guess something similar would be nice if you could just um, ask the system to log all the inputs and outputs in the calls for a given module, and that will be uh, pretty good for debugging, I would say. Um, I just kind of idea here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, so question is so yes, so I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, really understanding this in, in, in general. So what you're saying is that this system is not going, um, it's not not really just a, a centralized place like a cloud service that mm -hmm. you can launch your modules and use someone else's modules, but it would be more like a peer-to-peer kind of network that would discover uh, other services and allow you to to use them uh, with some kind of economy on top of that, right? Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, cool. yeah. that's, that's interesting, yeah. So, so, you, so, so for instance, you can run a node and uh, you can kind of uh, allow other people to run modules on it, or you would be running modules on how that how does that look like? Uh, so actually, I'm not <laughs> I'm not, 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 not the right guy uh, about to talking about the, this scheme because my main area of responsibility is uh, computation engine and so on. So, but uh, as far as I know, the scheme the scheme will be as follows. So anyone can run node and uh, uh, get paid by it. Uh, with, uh, we will have, uh, we are planning to have a blockchain, uh, so a little blockchain to um, only for licensing and to and only to receive money from users of the network. So and uh, it uh, will be fully decentralized. So uh, anyone can run uh, node. It will be, uh, it will have weight according to trust graph in the whole network. And according to this weight, uh, it uh, should, uh, it should handle more requests or less requests. Uh, and also uh, each node can uh, choose each uh, uh, model that it could, uh, that it can run on it. Mm -hmm. okay. So okay. it's, uh, we plan to make it fully decentralized. 
Yeah, that's interesting talk. Thanks. Any other questions? Cool. Uh, I will stop recording.